Hello everyone, this is Marcus from Lanterna again, and today for another video of our IB Biology revision series. So today we're going to talk one last time about the cell, and we're going to look at something very specific, which is cell division. So the first question is, why are we learning about this? Why is cell division important? Well, if you think about a lot of stuff that is going on with your body, for instance, if you get a cut, somewhere and then you know there's bleeding there's this gap and but at some point it's going to heal right that is because your body is capable of forming new cells that's not only going on when you have an injury that is going on all the time not with all of the cells but for instance skin cells are a very good example of how you you know you're shedding the upper layer of your skin and there are constantly new cells being formed replacing the old ones. That means we have a lot of reasons why we need cell division in our bodies all of the time. And that doesn't only go for humans. Obviously, if you look at plants, that is maybe a very good example because you can see it, they grow. Where does that growth come from? Mostly from forming new cells. Some cells can be elongated, but mostly um, in order to keep sort of the function of the organism intact, we are creating new cells. And so what is that process called? It's called mitosis, and that'll be the focus of the video today. Mitosis is cell division, and we are dividing one cell into two identical daughter cells. But mitosis is actually just a very short fraction of something that a cell can go through. Most of the time, the cells in your body are what is called interface. So if you look at the cell cycle over here, the very, very large majority of sort of a cell's life cycle, the cell is an interface. Everything that is usually going on with a cell, the regular functions of metabolism, molecular reactions, for instance, cellular respiration, if it's a plant cell that can be photosynthesis, all of that is going on in interface. Also stuff like endocytosis, exocytosis, what we looked at last week, all of that is just the regular cells work that is going on in interface. But we can subdivide interface even further into three more stages. The first one is G1. And so that phase is usually what I just explained. So regular metabolic processes, etc. And then what's also important here for the next stage that is going to follow, we're already sort of preparing. We'll get into that in a second. That preparation means we're synthesizing proteins from the genetic material that we have so that we have the proteins we need later on because proteins are very central in the cell's work, especially here. Proteins are, for instance, also enzymes. More on that during another video. And so they are very important for all kinds of metabolic processes, but also other molecular reactions. And another protein that is very vital in the very process we are talking about here is a group of proteins that are called cyclins. And these cyclins are responsible for guiding the cell through the cell cycle and initiating the progression through the different stages. The important thing is if a cell is not supposed to divide, not yet supposed to divide or maybe never supposed to divide it's these cyclins that if they reach a critical threshold the cell will go through the rest of the cell cycle but if they don't then it can just stay in g1 phase forever essentially if the threshold of cyclins is high enough they will in turn activate other proteins that those that we synthesized in g1 phase and they are now going to be important for the next phase which is s phase and S stands for synthesis. So what are we synthesizing now? So synthesizing, of course, just means we're making something, right? Before we made proteins, what are we making now? Well, now we're gonna look into the nucleus, into the center of the cell. What is stored here? The genetic material. So that is DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. And so now we are replicating the DNA. We are making an entire new set of DNA because later on, we're gonna divide the cell up and the two daughter cells both need their own sets of genetic material of DNA. So in this phase, we are replicating DNA and we will also have an entire video just on that process. But for now, you just need to know that's what's happening there. The next phase then, or the next stage, is the G2 phase. And that is very similar, but at this point, we are already on our way to cell division, so to mitosis. So what's happening here? is that we are synthesizing more proteins, now the ones that we're gonna need for the process of actually dividing the cell into two new cells. But what we also need is some of the central organelles. 
and we are already replicating them now so that they are already done when we divide the cell and the cell can take up its function, its metabolic processes right away. So that would be the mitochondria. And then also if it's a plant cell, that would be the chloroplast where photosynthesis is happening. So the very central organelles that are responsible for getting energy for the cell. And now finally, we're getting into mitosis, the actual dividing. So the most important thing to remember here is mitosis is actually not the entire cell division. We're not just ripping a cell apart and then we have two that comes later. Mitosis is dividing the nucleus into two nuclei. So the genetic material we synthesized in S phase, so the two sets of DNA, we're now going to put them into two different nuclei and then we can, so to speak, rip the cell apart. Mitosis also can be subdivided into four stages. And you do need to remember the sequence of the four stages, but also the events in the four stages. So we'll go through that now. But first of all, a little mnemonic device. PMAT is what you can sort of remember as a mnemonic device, so something to remember this by. PMAT, PMAT, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Those are the four stages of mitosis. So let's start with prophase. The most important thing to remember here is that it is sort of a preparatory phase. So we're getting everything ready for dividing the genetic material up into two sets because we've already replicated it. When I say genetic material, again, that means DNA and DNA is a double-stranded molecule. So it's just a long sort of chain. You can remember it as that for now, more on that later. So you can sort of imagine it like this. It's just sort of a, a big mess, essentially. And what we're doing in prophase is we are going to super coil the DNA into something that we can grab on and separate. Once the DNA is super coiled, it kind of looks like this. So we have very tight little packages of DNA and those we can then arrange together in chromosomes. So when you hear the word chromosomes, which is often thrown around, obviously, and no one really knows what they're talking about, it is just DNA super coiled into sort of this X-shaped thing that we can latch onto that we can separate during mitosis. And for the chromosome, it's very important to get the terminology right again. So if we have this X-shaped chromosome, we can only have that when the DNA is replicated. So usually you just have your one set of DNA. Now that we've replicated all of it, we have essentially two sets of DNA. And so the chromosome has the X shape because it consists of two chromatids. And so that's a very important distinction. This is a chromosome as we have it for mitosis. And this has two identical, and we call them sister chromatids because they are 100% the same. And those two, we are going to separate eventually and once we have them separated, which we'll look at during the next stages of mitosis, they then become their own chromosomes, right? So now we have this chromosome X-shaped, two sister chromatids. When we pull them apart, and then they're going to end up in two different cells, the daughter cells, they are now just chromosomes. And then let's say in one of the daughter cells, we're going to replicate that again. Now we have an X-shaped chromosome again, and we can divide that again, right? And so it goes on and on and on. So do remember the difference between a chromosome and chromatids. We only have chromatids if we have replicated DNA and then an X-shaped chromosome. Another important thing here is number two on the picture, that is the centromere. So that is the area where we are going to pull those two apart, the sister chromatids. And then three and four are just the description of the short arm at the top and the long arm at the bottom. Two more important things happen in prophase. The nuclear membrane starts to disintegrate because in the end, the nucleus needs to fall apart so that we can separate the DNA, form two new nuclei. And the spindle fibers are being put into place. They are made out of microtubules and they will be responsible for actually pulling the genetic material apart attaching to the centromere of each chromosome. And finally, we have the centrioles that move to the opposite poles of the nucleus that is starting to disintegrate. And they will be the two opposite poles that we pull the DNA to 
so that we can then form two new nuclei and have two new cells. The next phase is metaphase, and during metaphase, all these chromosomes, they're going to line up at what's called the equatorial plate. So equator, like the globe, it's just the middle, right? And so they are lining up there and the spindle fibers are attaching to the centromeres of each chromosome. And then we're already at sort of the most important bit, but actually the shortest phase of mitosis, which is called anaphase. And here the spindle fibers will pull the sister chromatids apart. As soon as they're apart, we now call them chromosomes, right? Because they're not attached to each other anymore. So that one X-shaped chromosome, we're going to pull the two sister chromatids apart and have now formed two new chromosomes that will end up in the two new cells. And then we're already in telophase and everything starts to calm down again. We have the nuclear membranes of the two new nuclei that start to build up. The spindle fibers disappear and the entire cell starts to elongate because what we haven't done yet is actually split the cell up actually divide the cell, right? We have now only divided the nucleus and the genetic material. Separate from mitosis, but still very, very important, is then the division of the cell. So the division of the cytoplasm and the formation of a cell membrane for the two new cells. So that means that process is called cytokinesis. And it is different in animal and in plant cells. That's important to remember. In animal cells, what happens is that we have microfilaments, which sort of form a ring around the middle of the cell. And we've already said the cell has become a bit elongated. And so it just sort of pinches down. And in the end, we have what's called a cleavage furrow and then the two cells separate. Now for plant cells, that entire process is very different because plant cells don't just have a plasma membrane, but on top of the plasma membrane, a cell wall that is made up of cellulose. And because that is very rigid and gives the plant cell sort of a, a very rigid structure, the cell division can just occur as it does in animal cells. So what happens here is that we have vesicles that form in the middle between sort of the two poles where we have the two new forming nuclei. And these vesicles will fuse together and they will form a cell plate that then develops into the new cell wall for the two daughter cells. And now we're already done. So what have we done? The cell has moved out of interface or out of the G1 phase of interface because of the cyclins. We have then replicated the DNA in the synthesis phase we have moved into the G2 phase to synthesize more proteins that we need. We have also replicated the important organelles, so the mitochondria or potentially the chloroplasts where photosynthesis occurs in plant cells. We then moved on to the actual process of dividing the genetic material, mitosis. We went through PMAT, PMAT, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And and in the end, after cytokinesis, dividing the cytoplasm, we actually have two daughter cells and they are, that's important, 100% identical, right? So if you have a skin cell, we cannot make a brain cell or a muscle cell out of that because if we divide it, we're gonna end up with two identical daughter cells and identical even in the sense that their genetic material is of course identical. That's why I can take any sort of cell out of my body and determine that that cell belongs to me because they have the same DNA, the same genetic material.